Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. That day Jesus went out of the house and sat down beside the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he climbed into a boat and sat down. The whole crowd was standing on the shore. He said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell on the path, and birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately, because the soil wasn't very deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants, and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among the thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1, and in another case, a yield of 60 to 1, and in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. Now, here in modern worship, Children are always welcome to stay in worship service, but our children's ministry does offer a children's church for rising second, uh, rising kindergartens through second grade. If you'd like to go to that, you can meet me at the at back of the room, and I'll take you down to room 214. Thank you. this week about a uh, man who had a, a, a pretty good life. Uh, he had a very loving spouse. He had a really nice home. He had two very healthy kids. He had it all. And despite all this good fortune, he, he found himself saying often and feeling like that he just wasn't enough. His inner voice would say things like, I should be more successful. I should make more money. I should be where my boss is. I should have a graduate degree. I should have more friends. Does this sound familiar to you? What is it about our culture that that keeps that feeling within us that, that we just don't have enough and we're not really content with the world? I know it doesn't take much for me to get going down a rabbit hole like the man in that article. Uh, All summer, we're going through the parables of Jesus found in the Gospel of Matthew. And these parables hold keys to what it's like to live in the kingdom of God, to live in God's family. The stories challenge us to live differently than the way the culture teaches us to live so that we can flourish as God's children. And today we look at a parable that that teaches us a truth about God's family, is that in God's family, you are already enough. Uh, A Jesus in, in in the scripture that John read for us, Jesus is preaching and the crowds are so large that he gets out onto a boat and preaches from the sea with everyone else on the shoreline and began to tell them this strange parable about a farmer who was spreading seeds. And the farmer is just throwing the seeds out 
to see what'll stick. Some fell on the path where birds ate it. Some fell uh, on dry uh, soil and sprouted up pretty quick, but then withered away. And some fell into the thorns that, that, that choked them out. And some fell on good soil where they would thrive. Now, most of the time, I've heard a sermon on this parable or have taught about this parable. Uh, we look at it in terms of what soil are you in? And, and there's some good reason. There's some good uh, interpretation of what's going on there when we look at it that way. Uh, it's natural for us to consider where we thrive the best. One year, on a mission trip, we were coming to the end of the week, and uh, we were sitting around a circle, and one of our high schoolers said that they were a little bit nervous about going home because every time they come on a retreat or a mission trip, they get, they get challenged to live life differently, and then after they get home, it doesn't take long before they're living just their same old routine. And, and that's because, you know, those kinds of things are kind of like that, that shallow soil. There's not enough of it to really help you get rooted in where you want to go. The type of soil we plant ourselves in is important. But I want us to look at it from a little bit of a different angle today. I want us to think about what does it mean that Jesus says the kingdom of God, the family of God, is like a farmer who recklessly throws seeds around. When we look at it, the parable through the farmer, it gives us a glimpse as to what this family, this kingdom looks like, and it's a kingdom that is saturated with God's grace. This parable would have been very curious to the people of the day. Uh, just like it is today, farming is serious business. First of all, seed wasn't cheap. It would have been pretty expensive for them to get. And a farmer, depending on what kind of seed they were planting, would be very strategic in how they planted that seed. And then, much like a parent, they would have done everything possible to make sure that seed has a chance to grow up and live healthy. Yet this guy <laughs> willy-nilly just throws the seeds out. God does desire for our hearts to be rooted in the good soil. But nevertheless, he hurls a ridiculous amount of seed on the path, on the, the not-so-deep soil, into the thorny bushes that, 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 that choke us out, and, of course, onto good soil. Why? Because there's enough. You don't have to wait until you get all of your stuff together. In God's family, you are already enough. You know, we don't have to uh, look on life with the fear that we're not good enough to be a part of what God's doing in the world. If Jesus uh, is saying that God's family is like a reckless farmer that extravagantly throws seeds, then we need to be the type of people and type of community that is somewhat reckless in how we throw seeds. We don't have to hold back because God doesn't hold back. There is enough of God's grace for everyone. 
It's enough. We can't run out of it. It's all there. I want to give us just kind of a few things to consider. And I think if we consider these things, it will help us to bridge the gap between who we are right now and who uh, the farmer, if you will, that God knows that that we could be. Uh, First, uh, you are a sower, not a scarecrow. Listen to verses three through four. He said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering seeds, some fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Jesus plainly says right there that some of the seeds will be eaten up. It is not our job to throw, to police the seeds. It is our job to throw the seeds of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the seeds that grow in the family of God. Uh, John Wesley calls these uh, means of grace that when we participate in in these kinds of things that that we experience God. Uh, When we throw seeds, we are spreading what Wesley would call acts of mercy. They're, They're when someone needs help and you help them, when when someone is hungry and you give them something to eat, when when a a neighbor has a loved one pass away and we go to their home and spend time with them. These are the seeds that we should be sowing. It's so tempting for us to become that seed police and require critique everyone's reaction to the good things that we're trying to do. Yet, we are to sow seeds with no strings attached. We should never uh, say to ourselves when planning an event, is this going to get people to come and be members of our church? That's not the point. The point is, is to throw the seed. We should assist our neighbors without any expectation of reciprocation. Uh, When I was a young college student, I was a youth director at my home church. Don't ever recommend that, by the way, uh, because the youth I was now leading, I was a youth with them, and they knew me for who I was, and I couldn't have that wonderful, I'm the guy in charge. But uh, here at this small little church, we, we did supper clubs. Anybody familiar with the old supper clubs, right? Where you're, you're put into groups of people and you have dinner at their house once a month for a certain amount of time. Uh, the, I was in a supper club with this family that was kind of the pillars of the church, you know, except they would kind of use their uh, authority to get what they want rather than be servant leaders, and we were at their house one night, and, and I just mentioned to our host, I said, I said, man, I love that tea pitcher. That's just beautiful. Well, she washed it up, dried it, and she gave it to me. Now, remember what I said? I was a college student. I didn't care about that tea pitcher. I was just being polite. <laughs> but, but it still impressed me a little bit that she would make this gesture, and I got home, and I showed my mom. I said, hey, look at this, and my mom goes, I wonder how much that's going to cost you. (laughs) There was another gentleman in that church who from time to time, he would see me in the hallway and he'd shake my hand and slip me a $20 bill. And I don't know how he knew it, but just about every time he did that, I needed gas. (laughs) And one day I I went to thank him and he said, hey, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what kind of value he had within him to where he didn't want to get any credit. (laughs) Maybe he took Jesus seriously and just loved people. The institutional church has been really, really good 
at being scarecrows and trying to police people's actions and have them be in good soil before they plant seeds. Now, don't hear me say that we shouldn't teach values. Don't hear me say that we shouldn't have standards. Don't hear me say we shouldn't inspire people to make that next step to becoming who God wants you to be. What I'm saying is there's enough grace to go around. It's not our job to lord over people. It's our job to spread the seeds. Uh, I was um, walking through the basement just yesterday and uh, Drew, my son, who's already watched uh, what's out with the chosen? If, I don't know if you're watching that series or not, but he's kind of rewatching it. And uh, I haven't started watching it yet. I've seen the first, only one full episode. And but as I came in, uh, it caught my attention. Jesus in the in, in the show was was getting on to I think it was John and James. They had done something wrong, and he had, you know, pretty much set them straight. And, and they were kind of licking their wounds, so to speak. And one of the other disciples said, what's wrong with you, John? And Jesus said, he had to be reminded that we're here to sow seeds, not burn bridges. When we act like the farmer and throw seeds willy-nilly, not everything is going to produce fruit. Five through seven says, other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among the thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked them. When you do the math on this parable, 25% of the seed thrown will produce food, fruit. 25%. Now, my stockholders out there are going, that's a pretty good return on investment. You know, if, if Google's right, a stockholder says a 10.5% return is pretty, is pretty good. But, but why is it that the church, if we don't feel like we can get 100%, then we just don't even try? We should simply be doing things not just because they'll produce fruit, we hope that it will, but we have to be okay with failure. We have to be okay with doing something that we have no idea if it's gonna work or not. We have to be in that business of just throwing the seeds. When we stop thinking of just throwing the seeds and we become subject to our fear, That's when the seeds don't get to those who are in those thorny bushes being choked out by life. Uh, the great Billy Graham conducted 417 events in 185 countries. Uh, it's estimated that, that events like this, out of those who make a commitment, only about 80% of them will, will, will continue to grow in their in their faith. And I used to use that as a statistic to say that's probably not the best way to evangelize. That relationships, probably you get more of a, a bang for your buck, so to speak, to build that solid relationship. But what I failed to realize is that Billy Graham was in the business of throwing out seeds. It's estimated that 2.2 million people made a commitment to be a follower of Christ through a Billy Graham crusade. This means that 1.7 million, if that other formula is right, did not follow through on that commitment and did not yield any fruit. That's not to count the people who didn't walk the aisle, who just heard the message and, and didn't respond at all. But you know what? About a half a million, 440,000 people came to find a new life in Christ through Billy Graham sowing seeds. The miracle is in the harvest. 
Verse 8, other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1. In another case, a yield of 60 to 1. And in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. You know, once we get into the habit of sowing seeds on a, on a daily basis, it, it might tend to become automatic. Don't be fooled by thinking those little things that you do on a daily basis matter. The gospel of Matthew makes a case for what God's family, God's kingdom looks like. In Matthew 25, Jesus talks about what the final judgment will be like. And the message paraphrase puts it this way. Then the king will say to those on his right, enter you who are blessed by my father. Take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation, and here's why. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we see you hungry and feed you, thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will say, I'm telling you the solemn truth. Whenever you did it, whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. What I love about that passage is that they had no idea that they were even sowing seeds. It's kind of like what Michael Bowman says from time to time. An orange tree doesn't have to think about creating oranges. It just makes oranges. They just did it. Over and over and over again, God uses ordinary people like you and like me to sow the seeds of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, fairness, self-control. You never know. You just never know what seeds you throw out there is going to produce an amazing harvest. We don't have to hold back. There's enough. There's enough for everyone. You don't have to wait till you become a spiritual giant and full of knowledge. In God's family, you are already enough. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for loving us so much that you'll reach out to us when, we're, when we are in the darkest places. God, help us to be the type of people that do the same when we see folks in need. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come to our time where we worship through giving, I want you to begin to think about what are some seeds that you can throw this week what are some things that you can do to help people see the kingdom of God? Our, our worship through giving is not just about our resources. It's about our time, our talents, our, and all of that. Uh, there are baskets on the end of every row. Uh, just find those, pass them down the aisle, and one of our team members will come by and pick it up. Let's stand. Let's worship together.